Right, I'm joined now on the line by uh, the gentleman himself from Magnum, of course, Mr Bob Catterley. Welcome to uh, Firebrand Rock Radio. Hello, Firebrand, how are you doing? All right, Dan, hello, people. How are we? The weather going for the moment. Well, yes, not, the weather is uh, not good, to say the least, but it is... Uh, okay, it has mm. not uh, disturbed us too much this evening. Give us a chance to uh, to have a chat, obviously, about yeah. the new album. Uh-huh, OK. Uh, Escape from the Shadow Garden, of course, is a title, and unbelievably, your 19th studio album. <laughs> yeah, is it really? <laughs> wow, how did we do all them albums? <laughs> yeah, we've been going a long time, as people know, but we have a, we have a very loyal fan base. Oh, indeed. Um, all around Europe, and the UK especially. Um, and that's what's kept us going all these years. And, you know, the, the people enjoying the music, loving the lyrics and the melodies and the songs, so, uh, and keep coming back to see us year after year. So that's, that's why we're still here, really. Um, and we have a faithful following that keeps this band going. And um, we're just trying to get across to more and more people every time we tour uh, to to keep on the big stage and there's a lot of competition out there so uh, we uh, try and put out a, a, a quite varied uh, melodic uh, rock album each time we do one and I think Tony's a great songwriter and he's come up with 11 great songs again mm. and the album's called Escape from the Shadow Garden and make of that what you will people <laughs> but uh, it's uh, great artwork great songs and I'm very proud of everything we do and I love working with Tony and Magnum and it's been my life all these years and 19 albums later here we are <laughs> great well, I mean, you're, you're just so consistent with the stuff that you guys release yeah. you know um, yeah. and it's been a highly yeah. anticipated I, I would strongly say by people this album um, I've certainly been looking forward to it and as as oh. regular listeners know only too well, with my opinion, that I, I tell it like it is, and yeah. I absolutely love it. I've only had only had it for two or three days now, but it has to be said, yeah. it, I've played it to death. No, oh, thank you. Great. I'm glad. Well, I'm I'm glad it's working. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the songs are uh, catchy, heavy, rocky, sad, melodic. It's uh, whatever you want it to be. There's mm. something for everybody on a Magnum album, I think. Uh, and that's why we get such a diverse audience coming to see us because of the diversity of the music, I believe. Uh, and I think it's appreciated. And uh, uh, we try and give everybody, please everybody, you know, within our audience. Um, so we just try to do this all over the years and give people value for money and not rip you off and, oh, we ain't going to see them again, you know. <laughs> so we want people, people to keep coming back and seeing Magnum. Of course we do. So we want to give them the best show we can at the time and hopefully see them in the future. And that's how we've built up our fan base over the years, by giving a, a good quality performance through songs and then visually, visuals, and we use a lot of visuals and lights and mm. backdrops and sights and stuff. So I think it's it's good to be, you know, this this kind of band and uh, having the audience that we have, and, and long may that be the case. It, it really? must have been um, really gratifying, obviously, when you guys split up in, what was it, 95, 96, that when you came yeah. back, uh, must be some 13 years ago, the fact that um, your fans mm. were still there, loyally waiting for you to come back. Mm. Uh, I hope, so. yeah, well, it appears to be the case, because when we came back um, with Breath of Life, that me and Tony recorded, it's Wolverhampton, and, and we, we, we put Magnum back together, and we went on tour, and everybody was there it was like you know we hadn't been away really uh, and it just got better from there and thank god for that people didn't forget us and it's nice to know that uh, people were waiting for us to, to reform and it was worth reforming for but tony and me are very happy mm. to to play to bigger crowds now than than we had for a long time so a lot of interest was building up an expectation of, of the albums to come and I hope we haven't let people down, and we pull more people than ever now. And we're doing bigger places, and it's all working very well for Magnum now. But uh, that's down to the Tony songs and just the the love of the songs from the fans. And you can't get better than that. And you know, it's brilliant, and we're very lucky to have that audience. Well, obviously, yeah. we can't forget um, your own particular vocal style. Um, not right. obviously, you know, you can write the greatest song in the world, but if the vocalist doesn't. Um, doesn't get up to speed, then it, then it's all to waste. Um, <laughs> <laughs> as it right. were, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, your your voice has not changed at all to my ear in all these okay. years. It's still as strong uh, as ever. Uh, well, 
Thank you. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. No. I've, I've, I love singing. I've been lucky with my voice over the years. And but the, what keeps my voice going and keeping strong is the the intensity and the the. The, the lyrics, the lyrical content of the songs and what the songs stand for and what I'm singing. When I'm in the studio and uh, I'm looking at the words, I'll go, oh, how am I going to sing this? Uh, and so I'll sit with Tony and he'll guide me through the lyrics and it's it, what I want here. And, and I can change my voice through the song or have a different type of voice on a different type of song. Mm. So I'm very malleable, you know. I, I, I think I'm good to work with, and what do you want? I'll give it to you, you know. There isn't just one voice here. Uh, but I love the words that much that you can hear the emotion in my voice Indeed. and the, the, the honesty of, of what I'm doing, you know. And I'm not trying to fool anybody. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to be quite honest and wear my heart on my sleeve. And I think you can hear it in the vocal performance a lot of the times, you know. Uh, and it, it really gets me going. <laughs> I'm quite an emotional person, especially on stage. And some of the songs I have trouble singing on stage. You know, the, the lyrics get to me and the, the look on people's faces when I'm singing the, the words to the audience and, and it, the feedback I get, and it really uh, throws me sometimes, you know. <laughs> and after concert, I'm singing the song, like Le Mans or or, you know, When the World Comes Down mm. or beautiful ballads and they, they quite get to me you know and the songs on here that get to me as well but so i mustn't show my emotion too much because you've got to perform and it's a good album to sing and play and there's a lot of melody on the album lots of different subjects b between the songs and i think it's just a good a great magnum album great artwork and uh, i think it's a really good package well, I must uh, mention the artwork because I am yeah. really, really pleased to see that Roddy Matthews has once again mm. stepped up to the mark and done a superb album cover. Yeah. It's brilliant, isn't it? <laughs> it's great. I'm not quite sure what it's all about, but it, it looks fantastic to me. Uh, we have the storyteller come back. He's uh, he's looking a bit sad. He's got his hand in his head in his hands um, for some reason. He's trying to escape from the shadow garden, I guess. I guess. I mean, uh, you can't yeah. always uh, understand what Rodney's painting, but it doesn't really matter. Cause, I mean, I, I've, I've always uh, historically bought a Rodney Matthews calendar for years and years. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. I've mean, done lots of uh, artwork for many bands over the years, and great, great calendars and posters. Um, the fans love him. He comes to uh, some of our gigs, and uh, some people buy the posters off him. Mm. And it's wonderful artwork. So colourful, and it's got a lot of depth as well. It's all, almost like through day, it's great. Uh, we brought the tree back with uh, lots of question marks hanging from that's fruit from the album, from the from the tree, lots of fruit uh, qu uh, in the shape of a question mark. <laughs> you go, oh, questions. So it's, I think it's there to make you think, uh, what's all this about, you know? And it's, whoever looking at it will have a different story, I guess, to tell about what the album uh, cover says. Uh, but it's, it's all very good. Uh, it's images from la old albums, Chase the Dragon and um, Storyteller's Night. And you put it all together, and it's like the history of Magnum, <laughs> you know, that you're looking at it here, artwork-wise. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's great. It's really good to look at, even better on a full-blown poster. I was going to say, yeah. I mean, there's a real danger, I guess, with releases now that artwork, you know, was in danger sort of dying off, you know, the whole yeah. um, album artwork. Obviously, it's come back and people are going to grab yeah. so going to mention vinyl. But obviously, yeah. it's, it's, it lends itself, it is that sort of cover to me. Mm, absolutely, yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you've I'm glad done this. Uh, yes, yeah, so there was a time when record companies we were with in the past didn't appreciate Rodney's uh, work at all. And they got so other people to do artwork for us which mm. wasn't half as good you know uh, but you have to go with you know the label at the time Indeed. Uh, but now SPV are very good with us and they they like everything uh, that we send across musically and uh, and artwork wise and they keep out of the way and they don't bother us too much but they're very supportive when the time it comes to promote the album they're there like a shot and they're very supportive and they they put out lots of uh, different uh, vinyl album uh, digi pack jewel case uh, bonus dvd recorded on the last tour right uh so it's a good package uh, and they but they give us to tony they give tony total artistic freedom which wasn't always the case in the no. past 
labels were a bit demanding, you know, the bigger labels then. Uh, but it's better the way it works now. It's given Tony more heart to be back in a band and to be with a record company. Um, it's just made him feel a lot more energetic and, and committed to writing songs for Magnum now because of the relationship he has with when we have with SPV. Mm. So it's thanks to them that we're back stronger than ever, really. It's, it's really affected Tony in a big way, and uh, uh, this is why we're still here with this album coming out now. That's the truth of it, really. But well, at SPV, this wouldn't have been happening, I don't think. Well, of course, we must mention the fact that uh, you guys are, in fact, heading back on the road, um, mm. uh, starting, yeah. obviously, in, in April, and doing a proper yeah. British tour, as I call it. Hey. Yeah, yeah, we're coming round, looking forward to it. We're going to rehearse in March. Then we're starting off in uh, Finland on the 7th of April. Uh, so we'll uh, get all the gremlins out of the way and uh, <laughs> we'll hit, we'll hit uh, the brook in Southampton. All, um, we've, got, uh, five, we've done five gigs, so we should be bang on by then. And we carry on through to London at Islington Town Hall on the 4th of May. And um, we haven't played there before. We played the O2 Academy last time in Islington, which is good. Uh, good crowd. Good, uh, yeah, but Islington Town Hall sounds more like uh, a magnum uh, of appearance, you know. I think it'll suit the music better, just the, the uh, atmosphere that we're in in, mm. in the town hall. So that's going to be good. I haven't played there, but I've heard it's a very nice place. I, I saw it on the TV. I, who was playing? I can't remember who was playing there now. There, there was something on one, one of the... Um, Mm. one of the music channels and, and I hadn't actually seen the inside of the venue before it's an interesting looking venue it has to be said quite unique mm. ok great we'll look forward to going there yeah so and that'll be our last show in um, in the UK and then we go off to Germany uh, Holland, Belgium and then we're in Germany for 12 shows with a band called Saga right Canada yeah and then we're doing like a double header a co-headline tour with them so uh, kind of slightly bigger places than we play normally in Germany, and themselves, so it's going to help them, both of us, to be in it like a bigger uh, auditorium uh, with more people and, uh, um, and benefit from that and spread the word from by Magnum and by Saga. So we hope to do each other a favour. And uh, it sounds like it works. It's going to work really good, and we know the guys from years ago anyway. Right. So I'm looking forward to that one as well. That'd be good. And, and then we've got some festival situation in the summer. We're going to go to Sweden, Rock. Um, Which, of course, is huge. Yeah, it's a massive festival up in Sweden. We've played it a few times now, mm. um, lower down the bill, but this time we're actually headlining one of the nights. Excellent. Which is great, which is very nice for Sweden Rock to give us that opportunity. Thank you. And, and we're doing um, the first night, the Wednesday night of the four, on the 4th of June, Sweden Rock, we headline that. Uh, I believe we've got a festival coming up at Rock and Blues in Derbyshire to be confirmed. Mm. Um, and stuff like that, and, and some more shows during the year to to be uh, finalised yet. So it could be a quite a busy. I was going to say quite a quite a busy year planned already, and no doubt yeah. I'm guessing that Tony's mm. probably going to start writing straight after again, is he? Yeah, well I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> be the way he is at the moment. Yeah, I think he gets bored and like oh nothing on the telly. I'll go and write a song. <laughs> uh, and he's got his studio at home, uh, which you. you, you puts ideas down on his guitar and um, some of it he keeps but a lot of it he doesn't keep oh no that's not working I can do better than that and that takes time and mm. so the earlier he starts the better the, the more time he's got to to finalise what's going to be on the album when he brings it in and I hear it for the first time and he goes okay these are the songs I think and we put some words he gives me some words to sing not necessarily the finished ones, but some lyrics, to, so we can go away with some choruses to about four or five songs. Right. And, and, and he'll work on those initially and complete those and come back and go, OK, now I know what the album is all about, I know what direction it's going and I've got the right. title. And these are the words for some of the songs and start singing them now, Bob. And I go, oh, yeah, now it makes sense to me. Uh, and then I can do... I can do my vocal then and we take it from there and that's how the album progresses and that takes probably another five months and um, then it's ready to mix and then send over to Germany to be released through the factory and the pressing plant and all that so yeah but a year and a half we do a year and a half between albums and tours so that's what we're doing at the moment that's about right at the moment I think that's a good thing uh, we can't wait to get back out there again you know be great 
Well, one important. thing I must bring up with you yeah. um, is obviously your solo work, because, again, yeah. I'm a huge fan of uh, the solo stuff you've done, and I'm, fingers crossed, uh -huh. hoping that you're going to do a follow-up to Immortal. Oh, no, it's difficult. Um, I haven't done a solo album in some years now. Oh, I, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. Uh, yeah, the Immortal album, with the last one I did for Frontiers, that was, uh, that was really good with uh, Magnus Carlson writing all the songs. Yeah, I enjoyed recording that. But that was at a time when um, it was okay to do and there was plenty of space to do right. it. And, but now is different. Now is not the time for anything solo-wise. I mean, I'm totally committed to Magnum and Tony. And, sure. uh, and what's coming up and what's coming up after that. I mean, I go off with Avantasia. I've been off I was going to say, say about Avantasia as well, but uh, you've beat yeah, me to it. <laughs> I, OK, well, yeah, I've, I've been off with that a couple of times, a couple of world tours, and that's a great thing to do. But only when I'm available, you know. Mm. If, if we're in the studio, then I can't. I can only do part of it, like probably just the European part, which happened in 2008. We were recording the Moon King album, and uh, I hadn't finished my vocals, but the Avantasia tour started, and I did like two weeks with it, but then I came straight back to the studio. They went off to Japan and South America yeah. and places, and I said goodbye to them and came back to the studio to carry on recording my vocal for the Moon King, uh, which is most more important than having fun going around the world with Avantasia. But I've, I've done it twice since then, so it's when I can do it and I'm available. Um, but uh, hopefully it'll happen again in the future, and hopefully I will we'll be invited and I'd like to do it again, God willing. That'd be great. Uh, but that's that's as much solo as I, I, I am able to do at the moment. Well, that's understandable. Because... I mean, there's only so much time in the world. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I don't want to spread myself too thin, and I, I get offers quite often all the time uh, come through through right. my manager Annie uh, and she has to turn down a lot of things people go oh, can we borrow Bob for the track on the album and all that you know guest appearance uh, but uh, it's, it wouldn't be right to go off and do that it's like well you know I'm, oh, I'm in Magnum you know I should focus and concentrate on what Tony's doing trying to do for of us of course and not be off doing something else really it wouldn't be right so the short answer is not it's not wanted at the moment <laughs> basically but it must be rather pleasing, the fact that people, are, you know, you are in demand, as it were, even if you don't take them up on the particular offers, the fact that people yeah. do want... No, it's, for, it's for... nice. It's a nice compliment. It's, it's nice that people want to use my voice and, and have me on an album and on tours. And that. It's, it's very nice, you know, I can't believe it. It's great. But uh, it, I can't do it. It's, but it's nice to be offered. But I have to say no, I've lost. Never mind. If I could just take you back to the album uh, before we finish up having a chat. Yeah. Uh, I, it's well, when I've listened to it over, say, the last two or three days, um, as Gary said, my mind keeps changing. Probably what is what is my favourite tracks on there? Uh, before um, we did the interview to see, start the evening interview to see now, I'm guessing today it's probably been too many clams and burning rain. But chances are, it's probably going to change again tomorrow. Mm. What would uh, what's uh, sort of the standout track for you personally? Mm. Oh, oh, God, well. Yeah, but uh, it's so fresh in my head that they all stand out. I mean, I haven't, um, you know, lost anything about the, the songs. I know what you mean, though. Uh, for, for me, standout tracks, apart from Too Many Clowns, Rock and Roll, <laughs> uh, about politicians and, you know, not caring about people who, who put them into power, and once they're in power, then it's like, you know, we don't... They, Break the promises incredibly that, relevant now <laughs> they, yeah well, that was all around the world and this country as well <laughs> yeah, indeed. Uh, with this present government and the too many clowns running the world that's the, the observation on that song in a rock and roll style <laughs> mm. um, put me rock and roll voice on how 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 me, uh, <laughs> me, uh, me uh, muddy waters uh, too many clowns stand out but uh, I could say that about a lot of them though uh, live till you die the first song Oh, God. I mean, that's basically about a ch child abuse and there's a lyric there of uh, sacred, the one orphan child, destined to collide, always cast aside. So, to me, I see a hand coming out and hitting a child there and, you know, be quiet and, you know, the child not being allowed to exist right. as a person, you know, child abuse. Uh, so, that's touches on that subject but others I mean uh, another standout track Unwritten Sacrifice the second song that's uh, that's uh, to do with the the, the the tomb of the unknown soldier 
uh, in battle, any battle, uh, modern day battle anyway, uh, young men go across and then they never come back, the families never see them, the, the bodies aren't found, they've gone up in a puff of smoke, they've just disintegrated. And who was he, who were his friends, you know, what, what, what's the story of this young man, you know. And all there is is just a cross with a helmet on it and a rifle, the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Indeed. Very sad, but, but it's a, quite a, a standout, uh, epic seven minute kind of song, which we will be doing on stage. So it's an awful subject, but Tony's musical writing is full of melodies and great sounds and keyboards and rocky guitar. And, and like you, you, you can kind of forget. The, the subject matter and just get absorbed and lost in the music, really. And well, that this is it, it, it works on various layers. If 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 I you know, if right. I say it, you know, you, mm. if you just want to have it on as a rock album, it works mm. perfectly. But if you actually want to just actually get into the lyrical content of it, then it takes yeah. it to a completely different level you, altogether. You, that's right. You can, it depends on the listener, of course, and what they're into. Uh, but yes, I mean, there's you know, there's up tempo dancing stuff on the album. There's there's ballads. There's there's heavy heavy tracks on there. We kind of fit into the middle section of rock, I think. Uh, and, that's, and that's because of the, the album's always so varied. But I think we pull a cross-section of rock fans, not, not one extreme or another, you know. Uh, not, yeah, I think that, that, that's a very fair not, point. Yeah, I think so, yeah. And I think that's, that's why we fit in, in the, mid, the midstream of rock. Um, and we go, we vary to the left or the right, you know, heavy or light. And I think that reflects in the audience that, that, that comes to see us. You know, we get all sorts of people, young children, older people, whole families, young ladies, old blokes <laughs> <laughs> my age, you know, uh, suits, denim, jackets, ripped jeans, I don't know, all sorts of people. And, and it's the music that attracts the attracts them and, and joins them all together on that one night, which was the subject matter of a song on Chase the Dragon called Sacred Hour, mm. which is the gathering of the fans in one place for the hour or hour and a half, one sacred hour. Uh, and that's still happening, you know, even today, and more and more, and we get lovely people come and see us. So it seems to be still working, and we touch people's hearts and minds, you know. It's, uh, it's good. I think music uh, should have something to say. Uh, but also be entertaining at the same time. Absolutely. And you can just have a jig around if you're fed up with the world. You can't hear it singing <laughs> or something. <laughs> well, obviously, so and it's, it's it great should, that we've got young, more young people still coming to shows as well. I mean, that that's yeah. good, you know. Because, you know, it's easy for the press to, you know, throw these stones and say, oh, well, rock's dead and this, uh, I don't think so at all. Far from it at the moment. No, that's, that's, that's rubbish, no. No, rock is very alive, believe me. I know it. I know what's going on. Mm. And uh, I, I talk to a lot of people in the business band, young bands, and young bands are, uh, are coming in more and more because of the, the classic rock bands. Of course. For, from years ago. And it's like, oh, OK, and I, I'm going to... They, they follow that path. So it's all coming back around but we, with younger bands. But the older bands are still there, of course. We're one of them. Because uh, the, the people have come back bigger and bigger, So and it's getting played more. And, and good, good for classic rock, good for us. Great. It's good for people's souls and, you know, peace of mind that this music is still available and it's getting more popular by the day. Great. Absolutely. I love it. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm, in, I'm in a very happy place at the moment. Yeah, it wasn't always like that in the 90s, but uh, it, it's coming back now, stronger. Guys, good for us. Good well, for you, Bob, people. All I'm going to say is I've taken up more than enough of your time. It's been an absolute okay. pleasure having you on, personally, because I say, as you've uh, probably gathered, I'm a huge fan of uh, of not only Magnum, but your sailor stuff as well, and yeah, just yeah, what thanks. is the absolute masterclass skill of Tony Clark in. Oh, um, great, name. Yeah, I love working with the guy. He's such a good producer. What a great guitarist and a great songwriter. Yeah, you don't get to work with many people like this in your life, so uh, I'm hanging on to him. <laughs> uh, we get on great, and um, we ain't finished yet, believe me. Great okay. stuff. All right. Bob, thank you okay. very, very much indeed. I say all the best success with the album, and I hope the tour thank also you. is another great success for you guys. Thank you very much. That's very nice of you to say so. Thank you, people, and uh, hopefully see you on tour. Come and see us. You might like it. Lovely. Cheers, Cheers Bob. <laughs> thank you, mate. Bye-bye, then. Bye-bye, now. Bye-bye, now. Thank you.